All right, are we rolling? Hi there, folks, and welcome back to American Air Gunner. On today's episode, Crystal and I take the mystery out of filling pre-charged pneumatic air guns using a hand pump and high-pressure carbon fiber air tanks like this one right here. Also, we're going to demonstrate how to add some bling to your air rifle by doing some decorative metal jeweling, next on American Air Gunner. American Air Gunner is sponsored by Pyramid Air. Air guns are not just for kids anymore. Umarex, your premium air gun supplier. And Air Force Air Guns, serious air guns for the serious shooter. If you're thinking about buying your first pre-charged pneumatic air gun, you might be wondering, what's the most economical way to keep that air gun pressurized and ready for hunting, plinking, and target shooting? Let's face it, getting started with PCP air guns and accessories can be an expensive initial investment. But once you've made that investment, filling your air guns doesn't have to be. Using a high pressure hand pump like this one is by far the least expensive method. Depending on the size of the reservoir, it may take a couple of hundred pumps to reach the desired pressure, which is usually between 2400 and 3000 PSI. To fill your air gun, the first thing you'll want to do is insert the fill probe. Next, check to make sure that the bleed valve is closed on your pump. This two-stage pump not only fills on the downward stroke, but also the upwards. So as the pressure increases, so does the resistance on the handle. Be sure to use your whole body weight to push down on the handle until it stops and bend at the knees to prevent back injury. As long as you're not shooting your air gun until it's empty, you should be able to top off with a reasonable amount of pumps. So figure between two and five pumps per shot. Okay, it looks like my air gun is full and ready for shooting, so I'm gonna bleed the line and then take the fill probe out. Some of you might be thinking that this high pressure hand pump looks a lot like a bike pump, but make sure to not confuse the two. Hand pumps like this one are designed specifically for filling air guns and can handle up to 3000 PSI, while a bike pump can only handle just over 100. A much easier way to fill your pre-charged pneumatic air guns is with a lightweight carbon fiber tank. I think I'll pass it over to Paul to show you how it's done. Lightweight carbon fiber air tanks like this 88 cubic foot capacity one from Airhog can be charged to 4,500 pounds per square inch. And that can give you literally dozens of fill ups on your air gun depending on the capacity of the reservoir. Now while this is a more expensive initial investment, there is no easier way to charge your air gun. When using pre-charged pneumatic air guns, we don't shoot them until the reservoir is empty. For instance, if we shot this Evonix Rainstorm until the pressure gauge underneath read 1800 PSI, we can expect about 50 fill-ups back up to 2900 PSI with this 88 cubic foot capacity tank. With this 9.5 cubic foot capacity Airhog Pygmy tank, we can expect about six or seven fill-ups back up to 2900 PSI. This is a great little tank that represents the ultimate in pre-charged pneumatic air gun portability. We have these carbon fiber tanks filled for us at a local dive shop that has the equipment to charge to 4,500 PSI, and it only costs us about 12 bucks. While you might not have a dive shop in your area, you may have a local fire department that has the equipment to charge these to 4,500 PSI. And who knows, just a small donation to that food bank might get you these things charged for free. 
Filling your pre-charged pneumatic air guns with a carbon fiber tank is very easy, but you have to be extremely careful and diligent about the entire process. We're talking about 4,500 PSI extreme pressures, pressures that can cause serious harm to you and those around you. The great thing about a company like Airhog is that they have years of pre-charged pneumatic air gun experience and will outfit your new tank with all the proper accessories. A carbon fiber tank setup like this one consists of three main parts. You have your air tank, your charging yoke, and the fill hose. The charging yoke has the main fill valve, it has your bleed screw, and it has your pressure gauge, or if you want to get technical, it's called a manometer. Now filling it is very easy. All you have to do is put on your safety glasses, take the fill probe that came with your air gun, put it on the end of the foster connection on your hose, and then insert it in the fill port of your air gun. I like to hold on to it while I'm doing that. And then, very slowly, and I mean slowly, open the main valve. Then, watch as it goes back up to 2,900 PSI. Just about there. Close the main valve. Make sure you know which way is closed. And then, bleed the line. Take out your fill probe, and that's all there is to it. Now, rumor has it that there are several companies out there designing inexpensive electric compressors that can fill your pre-charged pneumatic air guns. But until those units are proven in the field, there is no easier way to enjoy your pre-charged pneumatic air guns than by filling them with a carbon fiber tank. Folks, if you're looking to upgrade your spring-powered arsenal, but you don't want to break the bank, I just might have the air gun here for you. I have a 22 caliber Walter Talon Magnum. This is a brake barrel air rifle. I've never shot this one before. It's coming right out of the box as you see it on your television screen. We're going to pass some pellets over the crani, give you that ballistic data, then shoot some targets downrange and see what the accuracy is. Now speaking of the crani, a lot of you have been emailing us asking what is the power of the air guns you guys shoot on the show. Well, we're going to be using the crani as much as we can this season to give you all that good ballistic data. Meanwhile, let's take this out of the box and see what we got. Folks, the Walter Talon Magnum is an adult-sized air rifle. At over four feet long, 49 inches, it is definitely meant for those 16 and older. But it's also lightweight at only eight pounds, thanks to the composite stock. Let's take a look at some other features. On the front, we have a True Glow fiber optic sight attached to a nice large muzzle brake. This is good for breaking the barrel open. The rear sight also has True Glow fiber optics. It's adjustable for elevation and also for windage. On the back of the action here, we have an 11 millimeter dovetail for mounting a scope, and it also has a scope stop. At the very end of the action here, we have the automatic safety. When you break the barrel open, it comes on safe. Nice little hammer style design here. At the end of the stock here, we have a ventilated pad that also has an interesting feature. It comes with these three separate shims for increasing the length of pull. At the advertised 28 pounds of force to break open the rifle, that's pretty considerable, but it means it's going to have some really good power. Yeah, that's about 28, 30 pounds of effort right there. I'm using 21.14 grain Barracuda pellets. This is a heavy hunting pellet. We're going to see uh, numbers probably in the high 700s and, or low 800s even. I've got my crani set out to about uh, 8 feet away. Okay, the numbers are in. It looks like we have an average of 767 feet per second. Let me go ahead and do the math and figure out the ballistic energy. Okay, according to our calculator, the Walter Talon Magnum 22 caliber is doing 27 foot-pounds of energy. That is very impressive. You'll see much higher numbers if you use a lighter grain pellet, but for hunting, 21 grains is excellent. This is producing a tremendous amount of power. Let's shoot a couple of uh, pellets for accuracy and see what we got. 
Well, all right, I have a paper target set out to about 10 meters, maybe a little bit further. I'm not gonna push my luck. I'm just gonna see how well this air gun groups using the same Barracuda pellet. Well, there you have it, right out of the box, the 22 caliber Valter Talon Magnum, powerful and accurate. When you're ready to upgrade from a backyard picnic table to a real piece of shooting equipment, you might want to check out the benches we've been testing right here on the show. The Caldwell Stable Table has proven to be a rock-solid portable platform when shooting and testing air guns. The steel frame is rugged, powder-coated, and can accommodate shooters weighing up to 275 pounds. In fact, we left our tables out during the winter, and despite the cold, rain, and snow, they've managed to hold up. The padded seat adjusts from 16 inches to 22 inches in one-inch increments, accommodating for just about any size shooter. Not only does the table rotate at the base, it also rotates at the top, making it really handy when it comes to cleaning, maintenance, and mounting scopes. Make sure to always keep one leg of the bench behind you when you're using it because the bench can tip over. If you're looking for a shooting table that's durable, portable, and adjustable, you might want to check out the Caldwell Stable Table. Until we tried it here ourselves at the studio, I had no idea how to do decorative metal drooling. But as it turns out, it's a lot easier than I thought it was. Most folks use a drill press and some sort of wooden jig to hold the small part. But as it turns out, we have a neat little mini lathe and mill combination tool that made things a lot easier for us. Let me go ahead and demonstrate how we did it. Firearm enthusiasts and artisans have been drooling metal parts on their rifles and pistols since the turn of the century, and it's an easy way to add a custom look that sets their weapon apart from the crowd. Metal jeweling, also called damaskining and engine turning, if done by a master gunsmith, can add value and distinction to an otherwise Spartan firearm. Just about any type of drill press can be used for jeweling, but what's most important is the actual jig that holds the piece to be turned. This can be a homemade wooden jig like the one shown here, or you can even purchase a bolt jig at an online gunsmithing retailer. Here at the studio, we have a really neat little tool called a Unimat, which can be transformed into a lathe, milling machine, or drill press. Manufactured from the 1950s to the 1970s, the Unimat is perfect for producing small parts and performing intricate work on wood and metal pieces. For our project, we decided to jewel the compression tube of an RWS Model 460 Magnum. To create the pattern on the metal part, you can use a proper jeweling tool, metal brush, or even a pencil eraser, depending on the look you're going for. We used a 5 16th inch metal brush bit found at a local hardware store. To help prevent the bristles from deforming when we apply pressure to the part, we put a bit of heat shrink tubing over it. Before you begin jeweling, make sure you practice on a piece of scrap metal to make sure you're getting the pattern you want. For the best results, polish the part to be jeweled beforehand. Devise an indexing system for horizontal and rotational adjustments. In our case, we used a piece of aluminum can taped to the cross slide vise as a pointer and a printout of a ruler taped around the compression tube to indicate rotation. The markings on the ruler were used to get a uniform pattern in the drooling by rotating the compression tube an equal amount for each separate row. For a horizontal index, we used the moving carriage on our Unimat tool. The wheel was turned exactly four times between each successive mark. 
This gave us sufficient overlap in our pattern. Our next step was to clamp the cross slide vise to the Unimat's carriage. We used a small square to make sure that the vise was aligned properly relative to the lathe bed. Once the compression tube is aligned in the vise, we put a coating of valve lapping compound on the surface of the part. Without this abrasive compound, the wire brush alone will not give the desired look. You can then start your drill press. Be sure to start on the outside of the area that you plan to jewel. It's a good idea to lower the bit so that you can see exactly where it will contact the part before starting. Lower the drill press until the brush contacts the compression tube. Press down with a moderate and consistent pressure. We held the bit down for 15 seconds on each swirl. After you finish a swirl, move the carriage horizontally to achieve your desired overlap. In our case, four rotations of the carriage wheel was sufficient. Repeat these steps until you have completed a horizontal line of swirls running lengthwise down the compression tube. Rotate the compression tube to start the next row of swirls. We moved ours 3 sixteenths of an inch. You will also need to adjust the carriage horizontally to offset or stagger the rows. You want the center of the swirls on a row to align exactly halfway between two swirls in the previous row. This pattern ensures that the entire compression tube is jeweled without any gaps between the swirls. Once you are finished jeweling, rinse off the abrasive compound. Since we used a water-based lapping compound, we simply ran the piece under water until it was clean. For oil-based compounds, rinse with the appropriate solvent. Whatever compound was used, do not wipe it off. This will scratch the surface and cause hazing on your fine jeweling job. And there you have it, an RWS 460 Magnum with a really cool custom look. American Air Gunner is sponsored by Pyramid Air. Air guns are not just for kids anymore. Umarex, your premium air gun supplier. And Air Force Air Guns, serious air guns for the serious shooter. When we're not busy filming in the studio or target shooting out in the field, here at American Air Gunner, spare time is often spent browsing online air gun websites. There's a world of information on air guns online, but sometimes finding it can be tricky. Let's take a look at a few that I've bookmarked here. Some of you might already be familiar with this website, but just in case you're not, here's a look at Paul Capello's Air Gun Reporter. Here at the Pyramid Air website, you'll find a video series of almost 50 videos available to watch. Not only is each video fun and informative, but you just might find one highlighting the air gun that you're looking for. If you're interested in older air guns, you might want to check out Nick Carter's website. Nick and his friend Derek have been finding and repairing air guns for years, and their blog is a meticulous record of their journey. You wouldn't believe the amount of hard work they put into this website. Between pictures and a step-by-step -step process of air gun repairs, it's no wonder why this website is at the top of our must-see air gun site list. If field target competition is something you're into, the American Air Gun Field Target Association, or AAFTA, has lots of information and resources. Here you'll find information on upcoming events, competition rules and regulations, and just about everything you need to know for getting started with field target. Online forums are a great place to make new friends and discuss air guns. One of our favorites is at gatewaytoairguns.org. Here you'll find air gunners like yourself discussing everything from PCPs and springers to hunting and air gun repair. If you're looking to buy a used air gun or sell one of your own, they even have a classified section. For a list of all the air gunning websites I've shown you today and more, be sure to check out our American Air Gunner Facebook page.
We'd like to thank you for joining us on today's episode of American Air Gunner. Until next time, shoot safe and have fun. One more apple. Goodbye.